skeletons. Skeletons are used to animate an envelope. Basically, skeletons act like uh, bones into uh, a body. So let's try to demystify a bit what is a chain structure or a skeleton structure. So you choose skeleton 2D chain and your first click will create a root. Any click after will add a bone to that root. And the last click will create an effector. So I'm going to middle click and start creating another chain, which will be the, the foot. Now we'll look at this chain structure behavior later, but basically I've created the uh, chain in two sections, so I will be able to use the effector of the leg chain to be the parent of the foot chain. So by dragging and branch the effector of that leg, I'll be dragging the whole foot. Now I'm going to continue drawing the chain that I need to drive this character envelope. So I'm going to draw the backbone. You can undo any bone creation just by hitting Control Z. Now I'm hitting the middle click again to start a new chain for the head, just like this. You can see that obviously any combination is a valid combination. Uh, when you draw your chain, you have to basically think of what is the animation you will need to do on your uh, object and use only the necessary skeleton. Now I'm drawing a, a common skeleton uh, that you would normally use to, to drive a biped. It can be more complex or less complex. Again, it all depends on your animatic and what you want your character to be able to do. Now I'm dragging the, the arm from the top view and from the front view I can drag it into position. I'm going to rotate it so it goes inside the arm more correctly. I'm going to start drawing the hand chain. So in this case I'm going to only have one bone one chain for the, the whole hand, so all my finger will move according to these single bones. Now again, I'm going to start building the hierarchy. I'm picking the arm effector and picking the hand as the child, so now you can see I have a little hierarchy under the effector of the arm. By dragging that effector, I will be able to drag the whole arm. So now I've done the rest of the skeleton so the other leg and the other arm is applied and all my hierarchy is set up. So now if I drag for example the leg effector starting from the foot in branch mode I'm now able to drag the whole foot. Now I'm going to go in my show visibility option of my viewport and turn on chain joint rotation limit on both selected and unselected object. So in the next step I'll be creating rotation limit on my knee of the skeleton. So to do this I'm going to find the uh, delimit rotation so I'm selecting the effector of the leg and then choosing the uh, selecting only the uh, the bone of the leg then choose skeleton set minimum rotation limit well it's not it I can undo it so it's really the maximum rotation limit that I want to apply on this so I'm going to again select the leg from the effectors and now this time I'm going to draw them back translate them back and define this time the minimum rotation limit. You can see the icon showing the rotation limit on these bone now. So if you move your foot around, you'll be constrained to those limits. So this is adding 
like an intelligent behavior to your skeleton and you're making sure that uh, these limits won't be uh, go beyond. So I'm going to select all the uh, spine bone and enter a linear stiffness value between each of them. So by typing L parenthesis 0 0.2 which will would be my minus value and 0 0.8 which would be the maximum value I've just entered a linear value for each of these bones you can see that the first bone selected has a value of 0.2 the second one has a value of 0.4 and so on with the last bone so by animating this uh, structure you can see the stiffness is linearly propagated between the bones.